So what do you think, uh, Zarina, is the most important advantage for students without CS majors to work in AI ML domain? Is there any advice or resource to quickly get into this area? Um, I don't know if quickly <laughs> is the right word. I just want to say that AI and ML, these are advanced disciplines. Um, it's, it's not super easy to enter it, but it is possible. Uh, you just have to work pretty hard at it. Um, if um, a student has no preparation at all, it will be probably quite tough to get in, but there are ways to prepare. Um, so first off, several universities now, at least in this area, offer now degrees in data analytics, um, I've taught machine learning even, and even AI. Now, if that's not available in your area, you can still prepare uh, statistics, probabilities, that's like the bread and butter of writing this type of algorithm. Um, uh, taking programming classes, Python, uh, Python and R, either of those, if you know them, you can program uh, machine learning, right? So uh, take any kind of IT classes that are focused on data, databases, analytics, uh, and expanding a bit the cloud. Uh, a lot of the machine learning now, it's happening in the cloud. And there's, there's a reason for that. The cloud has the right technology to support that kind of heavy processing, right? So any of this type of skills, data analytics, the cloud, statistics, programming in Python, all of this will look very good and will prepare you for a career in data science. Uh, however, one thing that they would all look for is a little bit of experience. And I know that that's tough when you're a student and you're just graduating, you don't have that experience. Uh, fortunately, there are websites there. Uh, the most famous one is Kaggle, K-A-G-G-L-E. Uh, you might have heard of it. This site is totally free, has a bunch of uh, data sets that the data scientists can use to create their own projects and their own models. They also have competitions, so you can actually make money uh, if you're very good at it. But the important thing, you can create your own project. So that's experience, right? So when you go for an interview and they ask you, well, do you have any experience working in data science? You can say, yes, here are my projects. These are the algorithms I've tried. This is how I thought about it. This is what I've done, right? So. Uh, it's a better conversation. So I absolutely suggest having some work under your belt uh, on top of all these classes uh, that you might take. Great, thank you, uh, Zorina. Another question from, our, uh, from the audience here, an interesting one. So Zorina, what is your take on using AI and ML to power a fully autonomous self-driving vehicle? Uh, do you think that the technology is uh, uh, rape for, for this? Oh, yes, but I'm a, I'm a total optimist. Don't, don't take my word for it. I'm in no way an engineer uh, working on that, but I, I absolutely believe in this. I think it's, it's a great idea. Um, I always think that, you know, AI and ML can be used, of course, for businesses, for all kinds of purposes, you know, to make a profit, because that's why businesses exist. But also, there is a huge part of AI and ML where we use it for good. Um, there's effort, every major company has efforts in helping uh, charities and helping causes around the world um, and help, you know, just generally helping people. To me, self-driving technology really is about helping people who cannot drive or who are too old to drive uh, or just are not mobile and things like that. So to me, I think it's a great technology. Um, and I've, you know, I've seen, I've seen it work in, in small, like a small self-driving cars. We had competitions and things like that using machine learning. And I think that it's going to get there very soon. I'm a big optimist about that. Me too. I'm, uh, I'm with you on this one, uh, Zorina. Uh, another question. Uh, I'm uh, interested to know the career pathway to become a data product manager. I don't want to become a data scientist because I don't want to spend 80% of uh, my time essentially cleaning data. So it's essentially <laughs> someone is asking how to become a data product manager. 
which I'm not quite sure if this, this is something that you can actually answer since you're more of a program manager, but I'll let you uh, tell us, uh, give us also your thoughts. Yeah, I, can, I can offer a couple of ideas. So obviously I'm not a program manager, but I'm working with product managers. Um, first off, a data scientist nowadays, they don't spend 80% of time anymore cleaning data. It used to be like that a couple of years ago. I think it's gotten much better. The tools are getting better, right? Like there's a lot of tools out there who do all of this stuff for you now. Um, so it, it, the idea is to, you know, you don't want to pay this very expensive data scientist to sit there and clean data or label data, right? But now there are tools that can help them reduce the time to do that. Uh, and let them focus on the actual big picture. Um, but that being said, I understand that you know some folks don't don't want to take that uh, that path. To become a product owner in this domain, uh, it's it's a bit tough. A product owner, I'm I'm sorry, a product manager in general, uh, it's a it's a tough career to get into because you have to have all kinds of skills, right? And in this one specifically, um, you have to not only understand how this works, but also have the product skills. And that's like the UX and the market um, research experience and all of the stuff. Uh, there are a lot of, um, a lot of um, you know, classes out there and a lot of information if you just Google it. But I tell you in practice, it is hard to go straight for those kind of jobs if you don't have some, something to back it up. So I would apply to be either a product manager and then specialized in ML, or go in as a, you know, part of the team, the ML team, and then work your way to be the product person. Um, there are certifications out there that you can take, uh, but uh, again, it's, it's a bit hard, because think about it, would you hire a product manager who's never put a product to market, right? You do wanna see some kind of experience before you hire uh, that kind of level. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Zorina. Um, Another question, uh, an interesting one. Um, so it's someone who's essentially a senior uh, software engineer and, and he has taken quite few uh, courses on ML and uh, deep learning, both online and uh, from uh, universities. And he essentially understands the, the fundamentals. Um, however, he seems to be struggling to transition into uh, to ML and AI uh, job because the roles that he's uh, applying to, I think they are uh, asking for some, some kind of industrial experience or formal, or formal degree in statistics or machine learning, which, which he doesn't have. Yeah. Um, so just keep looking. I know some companies will say, um, I will only hire data scientists to have a PhD in statistics. Uh, but that's only some companies, not everybody. And I think that nowadays there's such a need that um, you know a lot of companies have just taken the approach of if the person has some of the skills that are transferable, take them in. Um, so here's what I'm going to say: if you're a senior person, first off, you probably already know none of this is new. Like I studied AI in college, and that was like what two decades ago, right? Uh, we had a tiny neural network that was made up of five nodes, and we spent my master's year trying to teach that neural network to recognize. We didn't make a lot of progress. The thing is the technology wasn't there. The concepts were there, right? So anybody who's been in IT, I think it has a lot of skills because the, the frame of mind and the concepts are already there and are already implemented. What happened now is the technology has caught up with this. So that's why now you see such an explosion of using this type of algorithms because now we have the cloud, now we're reliable, now we're secure, now we're scalable, now we can sort humongous quantities of data for $3, right? So that's why you see now machine learning coming in, but none of this is super new. So a lot of the um, IT skills are, regular, are really transferable. Anything to do with data. You have data governance, data management, data storage, data analysis, anything to do with data, data analytics specifically, please highlight that in your resume because that is super important and part, you cannot do machine learning without data, lots of it. Um, but I've also seen business analysis, uh, project management, obviously, program management, they still need this, AI or no AI, they still need the skills, right? Um, 
anything to do with the product management. Um, and I've even seen excellent people getting into machine learning who came from a UX background. And you would think there's no UI <laughs> necessarily in machine learning. Most of the time it's just a model working in the background that creates a number, right? The probability between zero and one, that's what it does. So why do you need the UX for? But in truth, as you define these use cases where you could use machine learning, you need that brainstorming with your stakeholders uh, and design thinking type workshops. And this kind of folks know how to do that. They know how to create the right use cases for machine learning. So that is a skill that you think doesn't quickly transfer, but it does. So if you have any kind of experience like that, you can highlight it in your resume. Um, that being said, again, I know it's tough. I would try to get in as a data analyst or data engineer of sorts, and then work your way to taking on data science tasks and work your way to a data scientist. That is the fastest way I've seen in my experience uh, for folks who wanted to get in with uh, senior skills for IT. Um, and I also recommend, again, having actual projects um, that you can discuss during your interview. That will give you a lot of credibility and have links to the GitHub uh, in your resume to those projects. Thank you, uh, uh, Zorina.